ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today I'm just addressing something I saw uh, a lot of people commenting about in my previous video, which was the Ryzen 5 2600 versus Intel i5-8400 showdown, in which at the end of it, I said out of those two, here in New Zealand, I would go for the 8400 because overall, it would end up being cheaper than the 2600 and uh, the gaming performance was higher and in my mind, for right now, the 8400 was the better choice. But I did say that there were plenty of reasons to go for the 2600. Now, a lot of people got a little bit grumpy about that. I expected it. <laughs> Anything that sort of goes a bit against AMD uh, tends to get quite a big backlash, more so than any showdown where I favor the Ryzen one over the Intel. The Intel guy is generally pretty cool about it. The same thing with uh, NVIDIA, but anything that seems to go against AMD generally provokes a larger backlash. I think because some people see AMD as like the little guy or something, but you know, I'm still entitled to my opinion at the end of the day. And I did, le uh, I did give very good reasoning for the 8400. But my main thing was people were saying, well, Kevin, you tested with a Z370. If you tested with a B360, the performance on the 8400 would be less. You know, and also that I used a 120 millimeter air cooler. That if I used it with its box cooler, the performance would also be less. So I thought, well, I'll do both at the same time. We'll test it with this ROG Strix B360G motherboard, and I'll also use its box cooler, and we'll see if the performance is really that much lower. So let's dive right into it then. So something I'll say straight off the bat is with a B360 motherboard, you will have a limitation in terms of memory speed. So the highest I could take it was 2666. That is a lot lower than with the Z370 where I was running 3600 megahertz memory. Uh, so that's gonna impact performance a bit. But we'll see if the other factors, you know, weigh into it at all. So let's first start with the temperatures then to see how hot the 8400 got up to in IDA64 CPU stress test after five minutes. And as you guys can see, with the box cooler, it got a bit warmer, uh, not not to a huge degree. 72 degrees is still just fine. The big difference there is obviously the noise of the box cooler is a lot louder than the 120 millimeter air cooler. Going over to Cinebench, we see that there's a little bit of a difference there. Uh, in the single thread, it's a bit lower, and if we go over to multi-thread, it's also a bit lower. I would say that is just fully the memory, though, uh, impacting that. And if we head over to Handbrake, we also see that the render time is a tiny bit longer, but honestly, in the real world, you're never really going to notice that. PC Mark 10, we also see that the scores are pretty much within the margin of error for that particular benchmark. So that was another one where you wouldn't actually see any difference in real life. In 3D Mark, this was a bit more interesting. So you can see the physics test was pretty much identical, and the combined score was just a little bit lower. So overall, there was pretty much nothing in it. It was about the same. Then heading over to some games, we checked out Shadow of War. And this saw pretty much no difference. It was within the margin of error, uh, so I can't really say much there. And heading over to F1 2017, it's a similar affair, pretty much within the margin of error. And all the rest of the games were the same, so we don't really need to go through them all because they're all within one or two FPS, which is the margin of error. So overall, what did this mean? So it's got nothing to do with the B360. People were saying, oh, Kevin, you know, if you run a B360 with the 8400, you'll only see the clock speeds go up to like 3.4 gigahertz. That was not the case at all. It's all core turbo was still 3.8 gigahertz. Sometimes it would go down to, you know, 3.7, but for the most part, it was 3.8, exactly the same as what I saw with the Z370. So there's no difference there. That main performance difference you're seeing is just the memory speed. And that is an issue with the B360s, is that you cannot run particularly fast memory with them. However, it still shows that with the Intel CPUs, memory speed doesn't matter that much. And this is something I hit on on the showdown as well. With these Intel chips like the 8400, you can get away with running slower speed memory, and it doesn't really impact it much. With the Ryzen CPUs, though, it does have a bigger impact and that's going to mean that to get more performance out of your Ryzen CPU you're going to have to spend more on memory and memory prices right now are crazy 
So that's just another factor of why I decided to go for the 8400 over the 2600 because you know that's another way that you can save a bit of money. So as far as the question goes, will a B360 really you know damage the performance of the 8400? No, it makes no difference practically. You know you're not going to notice any difference there. It's all within the margin of error. Will the box cooler impact performance with your 8400? Well, here in New Zealand, it doesn't. Maybe if you're somewhere super hot like Northern Australia or somewhere in the south in the United States, it might. But for the most part, no, it's going to be a lot louder uh, than a 120 millimeter air cooler. But as far, as far as performance goes, it's going to be exactly the same. So I just see it as people, uh, maybe AMD fans, looking to discredit Intel in any way they can and you just shouldn't spread her out this stuff And it's not like I'm the only one that got these results I'll link to Steve over at Hard Run Box covered this same topic practically as well B360 versus Z370 and he got Exactly the same results more or less. And I've been talking to Steve about it as well. So there really is no difference It's just a personal opinion guys and the definitely AMD's making good CPUs. I've recommended plenty of Ryzen 2 CPUs. I personally am running a 2600X in my second PC. Why would I do that if I thought they were so bad? I don't. They're awesome. And the 2700X is fantastic for productivity stuff. So they're still very, very good. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to say that Ryzen wins at everything. And it doesn't mean that I still think Intel wins in some areas. And in terms of out of the 2600 8400, I still pick the 8400. And that's all there is to it, guys. But as always, that's just my opinion. And I'd like to know what you guys think about the two of them overall. 8400 was something like a B360 motherboard, like this ROG Strix one. Um... Is that something that you've looked at before or are you just mainly going for the 2600 for the fact that you've got that upgrade ability and other things? It's a fun discussion to have, but let's keep it civil. And if you're going to comment about things, make sure you have something to back it up first because people just throw out crazy comments like they did about the 8400 and B360. And it means I have to make videos like this just to prove that it's all made up. So really, guys, let's be logical about this because you're not winning anybody over by throwing out crazy things. <laughs> and that's something that should go for the tech community as a whole. As always, guys, I thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.